Happy Thursday, everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour in the evening here. And we work on projects all the way through from beginning to end so you can be a part of the whole entire process with me. Uh, and right now we are working on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. Here is the book right here. Uh, today is New Block Thursday. So for the Quilt Along, the authors are releasing new blocks every, every week. Uh, they're all in the book now so you can actually see them all, but we're all stitching uh, blocks every week together. Uh, today, though, I'm going to actually continue on our grandfather clock block. We here have it here. Uh, we're, we have it started, this little arch going. We're doing foundation paper piecing. Uh, I, I just wanted to continue on this today. A lot of the new blocks for this week are actually paper piecing, so that's kind of just continuing what we're doing here. So I thought, why not? We got all the the grandfather clock stuff out here. Let's uh, let's keep working on that. But I want to show you the new blocks for this week uh, that we will eventually get to here. Uh, so let me show you those, and we'll do some more paper piecing tonight. All right, flipping you guys around. All right, here we are. Okay, the splendid sampler two. So here are the new, well, here's the uh, grandfather clock um, one that we're working on here. So this is all applique on. We are this far, this is the start of that arch going right here. So that's, that's what we have going on uh, here. We're gonna continue on that, on that tonight. So this block is from last week, but we're gonna continue it. So that's, that's tonight's project, but let me show you the other blocks here that are being released today. So we have, uh, let's get to here. Ooh, that's cute, that snail one. Um, Dutch Treat by Pat Sloan. This is another applique one. It's awfully cute. Uh, pretty little tulips there. All right, and then we got a few from the back of the book here. Here's my, my little list of the ones that have been released, have the dots on, and the ones that we have done, uh, I've, I've highlighted. I think we might have finished a couple more since then, so I have to highlight a few more, but whew, we got a ways to go on here. We're going to get there, though, eventually here. Okay, let's go to this one first. Uh, Star Plus. So this, again, looks... Oh, this might not be paper piecing. Oh yeah, it is. So this is still foundation paper piecing. It looks like uh, these triangles and back and, and probably these blocks are all paper piecing, but uh, the center looks like it's just uh, normal piecing, like some squares and some rectangles that we'll sew together. But so a few foundation paper piecing bits on that. We have my own little corner, which is pretty adorable. It's a little a little house here with a little heart applique. I think it's applique on top. And uh, this again is some foundation paper piecing. Here are the templates for that. Uh, these ones are not on the template sheet, so you can photocopy it right off of the page here. Uh, some assembly going on. So there's that one. And the fourth one for this week is Connection. I thought this one looked pretty fun. Uh, this again, it looks like it's foundation paper piecing here. So we're making actually two, two things that are exactly the same. This piece and this piece are the same, just rotated and put together, it looks like. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I suspect that this one is simpler than it looks. <laughs> so um, another fun foundation paper piecing one. But like I said, we are already doing a foundation paper pieced project. So I thought, let's just continue with this. Continue with this one. All right, so that's the plan for tonight, you guys. Uh, be sure to check out yesterday's video. I do have it up now. I, it took me a little longer than usual, but it is up on YouTube uh, for the beginning video for this one. Uh, how we, well, actually the second video was yesterday where we 
where we started sewing. Uh, the first video we made all our template sheets, we colored all our template sheets in. This has been so helpful though, having it all color coded. So we're gonna continue to use uh, that guide tonight. But yeah, so check out yesterday's video, video two for the grandfather clock. Uh, to see our process here. I'm probably gonna try and go a little, not necessarily, well, I think it'll go a little faster tonight, but I'm probably not gonna dig into all the explanations. But if you do have questions, uh, be sure to let me know. Uh, it looks like we just finished A6 last night. So A7 is next. That's white fabric. Grab some here. I must have some scrap white fabric. Oh, look, one just popped out at me here. Ooh, this might actually be a perfect size for that A7. Um, and yeah, I got tons of scraps. So this is a good opportunity, uh, like I was saying earlier, to use some of your, some of your scraps up. So, all right, let's, I'm, I think I'm just going to use this square rectangle as is for that A7. So, all right, I'm covering everything up that happened before. And uh, folding back that A7 piece, I'm going to just leave all this paper that's pretty sewn in there. Add a quarter ruler. So I hope everyone had a great day today. I'm uh, itching for the end of the week. I'm getting sleepier and sleepier in the evenings here. So it is time for a nice uh, weekend sleeping, I think. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to, I know, I mean, I can check, but this, this, piece right here is, is very much bigger than this A7 piece plus the generous seam allowance around. So I'm just going to match it up to that straight edge that we just did. Let's do a little test, test fold. Yep, we are covering it with our generous seam allowance, that A7 piece. I actually might scooch it up a little bit. There we go. All right, let's sew that first piece down. Oh, you got all your uh, paper piecing blocks color ready and papers cut. Awesome, Bonnie. Getting her done. All right. So I have that fabric still there. I'm going to just flip it around and hold that fabric in place along the seam allowance there. All right. Ooh, I'm going to go in the seam allowance again here. I think I might start on this side, though. So I'll start right at that point and then go all the way into the seam allowance of the paper. Whenever there's a seam allowance, I stitch into it. All right, there we are. Snip those ends off. You got goodies from Nancy's Notions, nice. Oh, and quilting gloves with the fingers out. Yeah, I need to maybe look into some of those too. I do like the grippets, but every once in a while, you wanna you wanna get a hand in there. So a little grippy hand. But yeah, those fingers would be nice to have out. All right, there we are, a little piece. We're carving away at this shape. So, all right, let's press this. Zooping over here. All right, let's move these guys. Okay, so I'm finger pressing it first and extending that finger press down the whole way and then hitting it with the iron. Wonderful. But there, you can already tell now we're getting, uh, we're getting that top art now, because each piece we're carving a little bit more of the shape and now we're starting to carve that top arc here. So, all right, let's uh, do this A8 piece. I have a lot of extra of this white fabric. I could have probably, I could have almost maybe use this for the A8 piece, but we'll, we'll use um, a different chunk from up here. Okay, A7 is done, A8. We're gonna get in the rhythm of doing this tonight. There we are. Add a quarter. It is getting bulky, the fabric for sure. 
because uh, we got a lot of seams going now. All right, now we need that piece that's going to fit this A8 piece. And you know what? I might actually use this cutoff piece here. Uh, yeah, I think we're, we're definitely big enough. So the right side is down and right sides together. There we go. Let's do a little test. I'm kind of still doing the test, but without, without the pins. All right, yep, we are totally covered yet with our generous seam allowance. All right, let's do it. Okay. We're speeding along here tonight. So again, please check out, if this is totally confusing, check out last night's video. Oop, lost the scissors. Floor scissors. Um, check out last night's video because I I'll, I'll get into detail a little bit more tonight. I want to see how far we can get on this. I want to get into the groove. All right. Let's snip the ends again. Ooh, where'd it go up top here? I think it got sucked down into the machine, ended up on this side. All right, all right. Over to the iron. Ooh, carving that arc. Ooh, I just got enough space here, so I might have messed up a little bit here, but I think we're, we're still fine. Um, luckily, if you use big enough pieces of fabric, there's room to um, make little mistakes, like if you're nudged in uh, one direction or the other too much. So here we go. I, I'm just barely, barely at my quarter inch seam allowance all around here. It kind of ripped here. But yeah, so we're still fine. I'm still within the right realm. But I was cutting it pretty close there using using that triangle piece. Usually I like to give myself a little extra slack there. But all right, that is our one side. Now we need to head back to A9. So we have that brown piece and then two more white pieces. And then we'll be um, we'll trim this up and we'll be done with with uh, the A. We'll be done with the whole entire A section. And that again, I think is the most difficult section. That's where we got this whole crazy arc made out of straight straight seams, basically. But yeah, coming along. Back to here. All right, um, A9. All right. Oh, you're having a hard time sewing the finished paper piecing bits together. We will definitely uh, talk about that uh, when we get to that point, Gretchen, for sure. I think there might be a little trick or two to help um, pull, pull the piece through the machine. All right, A, A9 here. So I need a piece as big as that shape plus a generous seam allowance. And I think that means Getting a new chunk here. Oh, maybe maybe down here. This, this is looking promising. Look at this odd shape. I wonder why we cut that out. Um, all right. I think this is going to be just perfect. Yep. Generous seam allowance there. Let's use the... Eh, yeah, let's use, use the little scissors here. I want my generous seam allowance. We're, we're trying to get a piece that's as big as this shape plus the generous seam allowance. So I'm just gonna go around and down and that'll probably do. All right, there's my blob, <laughs> pretty scratchy looking blob there, but that's okay. Uh, all right, let's match the straight edges. All right, I'm just kind of placing it in the middle, but we'll do our test to make sure it's in the right spot. 
We got a lot of seam allowance up there. I think we have enough down there as well, but I think it wouldn't hurt to tish it a little bit further down. Let's see if that helped. Yep, I think we have more leeway up here too. So, all right, so that was good. I moved it down a hair, moved it down the edge a hair, just so I could see it had more equal seam allowances all the way around then. That's kind of why I did that. All right, flip it around. And A9, we're going through all the seam allowances again here. Found that line. And all the way through. All right, let's trim those ends. So you guys, I started a knitting project this evening and I'm trying two new things with it that I've never done before. I had, to, I had to watch some videos on how to do it last night and so far they are working great. So I'm totally, I totally have the knitting bug again, but I am knitting, um, I'm knitting a pattern that I got a kit for a lot, like several years ago, like maybe three years ago now. Uh, when we went to, when my husband and I went to New York, we went to Pearl Soho. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but you should get on their newsletter. They have just the prettiest, uh, prettiest photos and prettiest projects, and they sell fabric and stuff too. Um, but they did a pattern that was for free, and they were selling yarn kits for it. Um, that's what I bought. Uh, but they they have the pattern for free. It is the sheep pillow or like a little lamb pillow. So it's this pillow that looks like a sheep, but it has a bunch of little bobbles knit into it and stuff too. I'm pretty excited about it. And, and since I did that dishcloth the other day, I all of a sudden really want to work on that kit. It's just been sitting around for ages and it, I finally got it out again and I'm, I'm super stoked. So the things I, the new, for all you knitters out there, the new things I, uh, oh yeah, Pearl Soho is cute stuff on Instagram for sure. Um, but yeah, the, um, you're right, Joe. Uh, the, the two new things that I'm doing, and I'm using my new knitting needle, needles uh, that we were playing around with, but I am, I did a provisional cast on, which I've never done before. And what that is, it's a way to get your stitches on to the needles for your first row, but in a way where you can pick them up later and knit some more from it. So it's like temporarily holding, holding all the loops in place while you work on a different part of it, and then you can pick up those loops again. So that's, that's a, oh yeah, Libby, I, sh I probably showed you guys that a long time ago. Huh? Um, but yeah, so I, I picked up that kit again and did the, um, so it started with that provisional cast on and I'm, I've never done that before. It's almost like you do a chain stitch with a crochet hook and then you pick up the stitches from your crocheted chain stitch and then that just kind of holds them all in place for you. So I did that. And the other thing I'm doing is using, I'm gonna just get a straight edge here. I, I'm using the magic loop technique which I've never done before either. So that's a way, it's an alternative to using double pointed needles. So I know this might be, <laughs> might be a lot of a, crazy words if you, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about. You know what, I'm gonna just sew this, well, I don't need this much, I don't need this much, I'll, I'll trim it down. I was gonna just sew this giant piece here, but I don't really need this much. Let's just, We'll just go like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so two, two new things. I'm just starting that magic loop technique. Um, magic loop technique. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that using my new knitting needles. So I'm doing this project that requires a pile of different knitting needles and stuff, but I'm doing it all with that interchangeable 
collage interchangeable needle set that I got. I forgot to do my test here, so let's just peek. Oh yeah, we're plenty good. I'm actually gonna scooch it down again. Scooch it this to the left this time. Anyway, pretty excited about that. <laughs> it's about the little things, right? Getting excited about the little things. All right, A10. There we go. You've never done the magic loop. You want to do toe up socks with the magic loop. Yeah, I had to do some videos, videos for that too. Luckily, what's cool is that my knitting needle set came with like really like floppy cables. So uh, it makes the magic loop a little easier to do. You've heard that some people like the magic loop and some people don't. Um, for me, using double pointed needles is always really scary. Uh, so that's why I was excited to try the magic loop, the magic loop technique. Because um, then everything can stay on the needles. I'm always afraid that all my stitches are gonna fall off on, on double pointed needles. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just not very comfortable with them. So I thought I'd give the magic loop a try. We have an arch. Okay, one more, you guys. We are almost done. We just have A11 here, and then we got our piece. And, you know, we still have all these crazy edges of fabric around it. Um, but that's, we're going to trim all that, and you'll be amazed at how clean it will look all of a sudden, because it looks pretty blobby still, right? But as soon as we trim that down, it's going to just look uh, super pretty. Barbara, you prefer double points, but sometimes magic loops works better. Oh, like on planes. Oh, yeah. If you, uh, if you have some turbulence, then maybe the magic or the uh, double pointed or I guess magic loop might be easier to, to put away faster, maybe. Ooh, you love double pointed needles, Josa, and sock yarn. See, I don't buy a lot of sock yarn. I think it'd be fun to be fun to try. Try I'm um, doing socks. I'd have to they'd have to be like bamboo or, or cotton though. That uh wool's usually pretty itchy. Alright, we're on A11. Our last piece. Okay, we need a chunk as big as that. Let's just try and use this piece that we got going on here. Get a piece of fabric that's as big as our shape plus the generous seam allowance. You know, I think I'm just gonna rotary cut myself a blob here. There we go. Match up our lines here, our edges. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I've had that kit for ages and I'm just so excited that like the fire to start up a project is there again, you know? <laughs> so uh, I'm stoked. Happy to be knitting and that was one of those projects that has been lingering here for years with me not working on it, burning a hole in, in my living room. It's sitting in my living room in a cute bag just waiting for me to work on it. And uh, finally got the bag out and giving it a go. I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, making socks is one of your goals this year, Joe. Oh, you made a pair 10 years ago. Oh, but they were too big. Are they wool? Can you shrink them at all? Probably not. Sometimes that sock yarn, they they make so it on purpose doesn't shrink, right? All right, last piece for section A. Sparking some joy, exactly. Exactly, Gretchen. That guy has been lingering and it, it was ready to spark some joy for me here. 
I was definitely not ready to give that that project up. It just wasn't the right time yet, and now now is that time. <laughs> new knitting needles, new project. I'll be happy to have an empty project bag there when it's done. All right, you guys, we are done with uh, piecing this A section. Look at that cool arc. Um, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to trim it to a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. I know some people don't do this yet, but I'm going to just because it always looks so nice and clean. Um, so I am going to go ahead and, and trim this. I'll just have to have it so I'm have it like in a in my envelope or something so it doesn't I don't get the edges all raw but it is so nice seeing the clean piece so what I'm going to do is uh, you can see around our section we have this line here that is the line we are going on so I want to measure a quarter inch I'm going to cut my seat I'm going to cut this out so I want to cut a quarter inch away from this line and you know, you might think, oh, well, I cut the paper a quarter inch already. I don't trust this outer edge. I actually just kind of cut that really quickly. Um, what I trust is this line to be my shape. So I am going to um, just trim it out. Oh, I've, I've ironed it already, Debbie. So this is, this is all, I, when, I've, when I pressed this last piece down, I ironed, I pressed the whole thing. So we're, we're ironed. Um, so I'm going to, you know what, let's get the rotating cutting mat out too. Sometimes it's nice um, working in a small space to just be able to rotate this. So let's start with the long edge first. I'm going to put uh, the quarter inch mark on that line. And I'm going to trim. And I might trim off some of this little paper edge at the same time just because, like I said, I, I cut the paper pretty roughly. I'm only concerned with that that uh, line around the shape. And and really on some foundation paper piecing patterns that you might purchase at some point, uh, sometimes they don't even have this edge given to you. So you have to remember to add the quarter inch edge. And that's kind of that's kind of why I like thinking about um, the line versus this outer edge because on some patterns they don't they don't give you that. So I'd rather remember cut from the line. Oop, little wiggly here. Oh, you think you're gonna do the yo-yo technique for the clock face? You know, I like that technique, Gretchen. I, I might do that too. Or we might try the uh, the tinfoil technique again. That's always kind of fun. It'll be a little while till we get that far. Got all this paper piecing to do first. All right, and last piece. So like I said, wait till you see the front of this and how magically cleaned up it looks like all of a sudden by, by just trimming all these edges really nice. So all right, there we go, cute. Here is our uh, first piece here. And look, I'm noticing I probably did not well, yeah, I think I, I think there's enough seam allowance there, but I could have had these pieces a little longer because in theory, I want this to go all the way. Um, like I may, might not have made enough seam allowance there, but luckily there is enough. You know, I'll only have like an eighth inch seam allowance though where these points are. So I could have made those pieces bigger and extended them a bit farther. Yeah, might have made those a little short. I don't know, but I think we're, we'll definitely still be good. But yeah, so look how clean and pretty it looks already. So I think we have time to start on one of our next pieces here. So remember, I, I've pinned them all together here. And you know what? I might, I might keep my finished ones clipped together in a separate pile. But let's get our next piece out. So B is the next piece. And here we can kind of see what it will look like. This will be, I think, kind of tucked into here. It'll actually be on this side because this is the wrong side and this is the right side. So it's actually gonna go on this side of the piece, but the opposite side, piece C, section C is, is identical. So um, we can kind of get a peek at it. It'll go right there. 
And here's section C there. But it's fun to look at. Really, it goes on, on this other side. So like that. Uh, but we're not going to sew those together quite yet. Um, we're going to do that, guys, separately. So I'm going to just let these guys hang out. Actually, you know what? I'm going to clip it to here. Let's just keep it all together this way. All right. So uh, let's see what's happening here. So same thing as before. We have, um, we're just now on the B section. So there's numbers. Um, you see all the Bs. That's how you know it's the B section. And there's four pieces to here. One, two, three, four, and we go in order again by number. So we do B1 first, B2, B3, and B4 slashes across all of them at the end there. So we just need the tiniest itty bitty piece for this. We actually need a piece as big as B1 and the generous seam allowance. So we do need, you know, a little bit bigger piece, but you know, this guy right here looks pretty dang good. It's obviously much bigger than that B1 piece, but easy peasy. Get it done quick. Um, all right, I need my glue stick. All right, I can't find my, my little glue stick is hiding out somewhere, so I'm gonna use my old glue stick. This is just like some water soluble glue. Gosh, it's probably all dried out. All right, I'm just gonna put a dab on the back of that B piece, it's so little. B1. There we go. <laughs> and uh, we are done with B1. Oh, that's true, Linda. You know what? Let's do that. So we can uh, do, uh, you can do shapes all at once too. So um, this is something typical if you have a lot of pieces that are pretty much the same, the same design. So we have, uh, we have the C section here that's pretty similar, right? It's just um, mirrored. So we could go ahead and do this at the same time to just kind of kind of keep going with it. That's a good idea. So let's find, I think I have another one of those weird triangles. Yeah, here we go. Let's, um, let's trim, trim this fuzzles off. But let's just go ahead and do the C1 piece too. So flip this guy, he would go, there we go, like, that. All right, let's get some glue on there. Good idea, Linda. So again, right on the back, I can kind of see through it. Back of that C1 piece. Wow, this glue is weird now. Haven't used it in a while. Okay, gluing it onto the wrong side of the fabric. Oh, you filled your glue pen by shoving it into a glue stick. Oh, that makes sense. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so we are done with B1 and C1. There we are, kind of funny. All right, let's, uh, what's next? We got B2 and C2. You know, let's see if we can get those out of these chunks of fabric here. Um, first, I'm gonna do my, uh, my trimming. So, okay, covering up B1. Okay, let's get our seam allowance here. All right, all right. And let's do the C one again as well. We're actually working on C2 and B2. Trim that excess. Okay, it does actually go a lot faster doing several at once, but it can get confusing. Like if you feel like you might get all confused with the pieces, do them one at a time. But once you do get in a rhythm, like how, how we're kind of getting here, it is, uh, it is kind of easy to, to keep going. So all right, we got B2. We can actually cut a piece that looks pretty similar. It looks like all I need, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a square with this little chunk missing, but we could just cut like a square about that size. So you know what, I'm gonna just kind of maybe fold this piece in half. Get two pieces out of it right away. That's looking pretty good. Let's give myself some seam allowance here. And maybe, maybe this way a little. Okay. 
trim it down at the bottom and we'll we'll trim it in half here I'm not even using a ruler there but there we go we got our, our two pieces so what we're gonna do on these edges here squ uh, square looking pieces like these are easier than triangles where sometimes it, it hurts your brain a little bit to um, see how the relationships work but um, you know of flipping the fabric around and is it gonna flip back the right way but but squares are pretty easy so I'm gonna and we're doing like such large pieces just because it makes things easy so I'm just going to cover that let's do our quick test oh yeah we're covering the whole thing so let's let's do that one let's do this guy right away too I love having extra fabric like this to to do this you know my seam allowances are huge but it makes it so easy like I can quickly just flip I don't have to do much adjusting easy peasy all right two pieces at once love that idea all right let's get the first piece over here all right let's flip it around hold oop don't want to lose my edge here there we go line them up flip it around and I'm just going in that line in between b1 and P b2 so it's just that little itty bitty guy right there that's it about about three stitches do it that's how small this piece is three stitches crazy all right trim trim all right let's do that c piece as well these edges are still together right between that c1 and c2 spot i'm gonna drop my scissors again remember i do have my um my stitches set to be a little bit smaller yeah you trimmed more thread than it took to sew i know right that's what i'm doing here too but oh well this is probably point oh 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 one sense of thread that um that we're wasting here i think we'll be okay all right there we go let's uh let's press those pieces back to the mat i always set my stuff down here and it's always in the way <laughs> all right our two pieces all right, remember we're ironing with the um the printed side down we don't want that on our iron now this i definitely want to finger press so i always uh, i've been uh, finger pressing them first each time and here's why like it's only sewn on that little piece so if i flip this over and and just press i'm gonna get it all like wanting to go like that but if i finger press it first like press that little part there and just kind of extend the seam allowance then we're going to get like a nicer straight line there. All right, let's do that one. All right. Still wanted to move up a little bit, but that's that's fine. All right. B2 is done. Looks like nothing so far, but it will. All right, let's do the C c2 or i mean b2 is done b1 is done too okay there we go all right that's the c the c section there all right moving on you guys all right c3 and b3 and c3 all right next up so let's uh let's start by doing our postcard technique cover up everything we did before so here we need a little bit bigger 
bigger pieces. So Jennifer, I can't quite read, I can't read your whole comment because it only lets me see a little bit of it, but um, I'm in a pretty small space here, although I don't clean it up every night. So um, that would add, I think, to the pressure um, for me a little bit here. Um, but I'm in a pretty small space. Like it's just, it's just this small table and I have, I have all, you know, this is my only cutting area that my, I, my, uh, machines right here and the ironing's right there. So I've I've put small things in my space to work with like I don't have a big ironing board and stuff. So that's that's helpful. But you could get like a big tray and then everything when you're not working on it can go on the tray and then you can set that tray or a basket somewhere and then that could be your Splendid Sampler 2 basket or something. All right, we got our nice straight edges here. Like I like I love how it's mirrored like that. All right, we need pieces of fabric, and it, and we're, it looks like white still. We've color coded, so um, B three C three. We need a piece that's as big as our shape plus a generous seam allowance around it. So let's. I think we need to cut. I don't have any more. Oh, I must have more white scraps. Let's. Oh yeah, tons, tons of white scraps. Here we are. Ooh, this is like the perfect size too. I think I can go this way. Yeah, that's plenty that way. So let's um let's fold it again just because these pieces mirror each other. That's a bit much here. That's looking plenty good. Let's just trim across. I mean this is you know super big. I'm definitely making these pieces way bigger than I need to, but it's just it just makes things easy makes makes things um, so I don't have to think about it so much. All right, this is very obviously going to cover the whole area. And I suspect this will too. So you don't have to do any extra measuring or anything if your pieces are big enough. Great, great. Let's sew those two. I think we might finish two more sections today, which is crazy. Um, so we finished the A section and we're going to plow through these B and C sections as well. They are smaller, but still, I think if we wouldn't have done them together, like how we are, I don't, I don't think we would have, would be getting them done. We would have just got this B section done. So pretty happy about this. There we are. I could probably just keep sewing the other one right after, but um, I like starting kind of in the middle there. So we'll just we'll just trim all these extra threads. Oh, you have to con Mari. You're uh, you have to do the tidying up. Uh, life changing magic of tidying up uh, thing for your. For your sewing room, I think that'd be a that'd be a tough one. But you know, I've done that once. I should do it again with the sewing room. But it, I do find it helpful going through each each thing and do I want it yet or not? Took a long time, but it felt really good, and I knew where everything was after. All right, that guy's sewn. It's time to do it again though. Especially I've I've cleaned up my basement quite a bit and I'd love to make another like a little sewing, kind of a bigger sewing area there. Oh Amy, you got you cook, uh, got you hooked on Marie Kondo. Yeah, I just I I love it. I love it so much. I love the idea of like asking yourself, do I does this item bring me joy? Like do I actually even like this piece? You know, do I want it in my life even? Even if it's useful or, or whatever, do I need it as extra something hanging around? A lot of times it feels better 
feels better without it. I've, I've found once I give it away. And I always think like, you know, I don't love you object like how I should and someone else might love you more. So I'm going to give you to that person. That's, that's kind of how I feel about that a little bit. Let, let that piece, let that piece of fabric or whatever it is, find that other person, you know, that other person who is going to love it. Oh, you're finding that it works on your mo your mood, the cleaning and organizing. Yeah, it, it's pretty overwhelming when you start, but it does, it really does. Once you get it, the um, where you can really see the things that you actually, because you've gotten rid of things, once you can see the things that you actually do love and they're all together, it magnifies how much you love them too, which is just exciting. All right, you guys, last piece. Uh, B4 and, and C4 here. Uh, let's trim them first. Let's add a quarter of them. Your kitchen and pantry is the problem. Yep, I have not, I've not tackled the kitchen stuff yet, so I do have to do that. I think we have once though. I mean, I got the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, several years ago, like at least two years ago. So that at that point, I did um, I did a lot of getting rid of stuff. Um, or, you know, or a lot of discovering what sparks joy and keeping those things. That's probably a better way of saying it. Um, so I did a lot of that already. So I'm guessing I probably did do that quite a bit in the kitchen but it's time to do it again and get those little organizing tips in there as well. Okay, that's that. Let's, oh gosh, look how cute it looks once we trim that out. Little tiny triangle in there. All right, we need um, that piece that's gonna be as big as that C4 and B4 and uh, um, get our generous seam allowance here as well. So it's that brown, which is, which is this color here. I want to cut all my other scraps here, separate this. All right. I think we can almost cut a square here and cut it in half, but let's, let's see. Yeah, I'm thinking we could just do a little straight edge here, like a quarter inch away from, from the fold here. Yeah, let's do this for one. Cut off that little bit. All right, I think this is gonna be our C4 piece. Yeah, maybe scooch it. Scooch it down a hair. So cute. All right, that's better. Oops, sorry, a little off screen there. <laughs> you have so much fabric, you could start a fabric shop. That's something I'm trying to go through. So like, uh, you know, you've, uh, you've probably noticed if you've been me with me for a while here that I haven't purchased any new fabric in a while. I did, I did cave and get some of that, that um, green sparkly fabric um, when I did that giveaway of that quilt. But other than that, I'm wondering if I can squeeze this in. I've been trying to use my own stuff up. So I've been pretty actively just trying to go through my stash. So all of, all of these um, projects that we've been doing have been with just fabric that I have. And it's been a challenge because, you know, like I said, when I, when I picked out the fabrics for this quilt, I wanted a bunch of neutrals, but I discovered that most of my light neutrals were, um, were light yellows. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm making kind of a light yellow quilt, um, which, you know, so I got to work with what I, what I have here, which has been its own challenge, but I kind of love it. I love that I gotta figure out a way to make what I have 
work. I'm, I'm actually, actually pretty excited about that. And I'm still on that kick, so I'm still in the use up all the things kick, and I'm, I'm happy that hasn't gone away. I'm still excited about it. All right, these are our last pieces here. We'll trim these up too, so we'll have perfect little pieces here. And actually, these will probably be ready to sew to our A piece. We could almost do that already, but I think we'll wait. Um, we'll wait till tomorrow to do that. But I'm really excited that we got both of these pieces done. All right. Again, color coding this beforehand was so helpful, um, made this process way quicker. All right, this is the B4 piece. Zoop. You know, I just realized, I don't think I've oiled the machine in a little while. Um, I should maybe, once we're done with um, working on this grandfather clock, maybe I'll clean up the machine. Or before we do the next big thing, like before we quilt or something, maybe I'll oil up the machine again. Although it sounds all right. It doesn't sound like it's kerchunking along. It sounds pretty smooth still. Oh, Linda, you're seriously into using what you've got, but also no waste. Yeah, so I've been uh, um, doing, uh, for the backs of my quilts, for a lot of them lately, I've been using up, I've just been like improv piecing, uh, kind of like this, um, my excess fabric together, and, and I've just had, but that's just been so enjoyable too, like trying to not do the waste, because, you know, in theory, I suppose this, Quilting makes quite a bit of waste. All the, little, all the little scraps here and there and everything. Look at that tiny triangle in there. All right, C piece is done. Let's let's do the B. Oops, I didn't, didn't finger press that one. There we go. Went into autopilot mode and just pressed it. Oh, you've been using what you have for cooking. Oh, like chop, like what's the secret ingredient? And then you have to make something out of that. That's a good idea. All right. So let's uh, trim these guys out, but they're they're done. They are paper beast. So kind of funny little pieces. Let's, uh, let's get the rotating mat out again. That's always nice. And trim these guys. Again, I'm going to just pay attention to that outside line, not the paper. Not the paper edge. Quarter inch. Two more pieces done tonight. Wow, I did not think we were going to get this far. I thought we'd get lucky if I um, finished that, the A piece. But we'll have to, we'll peek at what this looks like with the A piece. Let's see how clean and pretty it looks. Oh my god, look how adorable. But look how, look at the difference, how cleaned up, how magically far along this looks um, by trimming it compared to, compared to this guy. All right, flip him. I close my rotary cutter every time. Every time I never, never leave that open. I don't want to accidentally grab the blade. It's good practice to get into. All right, one more cut. Cruising along. All 
Awesome. All right. Here is, oop, here's this feller. And let's, um, let's now see what it looks like with this A piece. Let's bring, bring all our dudes back over here. All right. So this will get matched up. I think it probably gets, I don't know. Let's check it out. See how much it matches up here. Oops. Here we go. All right, so this triangle part does match up with with this angle. So, all right, so it does. It's it's about like about like this. It'll be kind of kind of like that, and this side. Look at that little detail. I guess we needed that little detail to mimic a grandfather clock even more, which is kind of fun. There we go. So that's, uh, that's what it's, it's coming along, you guys. <laughs> yeah, especially next up, um, here are the next pieces. Next up are the uh, big um, pieces that go downward. So now we're just going to be filling this in. I think it's going to go super fast, actually, now that we have those. I mean, look at this. You know, this is just the big center here. That's just one big square. And then at the bottom, we have a couple other um, PC pieces. Oh, we have to pick a color for that yet. But yeah, we definitely definitely got the difficult part done, I think. All right, let's put these back in order. Yeah, we'll do um, D and E. We'll do those at the same time again, because they're like exactly the same. And F isn't even pieced. It's just, it's just done already. <laughs> it's one piece. So we could just cut that rectangle real easy. Yeah, next three pieces will be easy. Um, we'll work on those tomorrow. Gosh, I wonder... Nah, we can't finish all this in one day. But in two days, we might be done with the piecing of it all. But there we are, you guys! Again, look at... I love that. Look at how many pieces are in there in that arc that we created. I think it's pretty cool. All right, uh, I think we're done for the night, you guys. I'm going to flip you around and call it an evening here. Hello again. So, all right, here is that perfect little arced piece here. <laughs> it's so small. It is so itty bitty 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 bitty. Oh, so you guys were shaking quite a bit here. All right, and then these little guys. Oh, he goes on this side. Yeah, this is how small these are. So, oh, look at it from far away. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, I love those little points. You almost need them, don't you? Oh my gosh, it is crazy. It's crazy that this is made up of all straight pieces, right? I mean, that's kind of the neat, that's, that's the magic of uh, foundation paper piecing. And it's why it's one of my favorite, favorite things to do. It just looks looks fancy. It looks like, how did they do that? <laughs> so awesome, you guys. Uh, thanks again for joining me here tonight. Uh, I'll get this up on YouTube, but if you have not done this before, make sure to watch my first two videos for this clock because uh, they're really helpful to get started, especially coloring in the templates before you get going. I mean, that really saves a lot of mental energy <laughs> uh, and a lot of uh, room for mistakes. So uh, that's great. And then yesterday's video, video two, is where we start um, start that really intricate intricate A piece. And then you learn the whole process. I explained it a lot more than I did tonight. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Uh, but thanks again, guys. Uh, I will be here tomorrow, Friday already. Um, I'll be here at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So have a great day tomorrow and yes, stay warm. You guys stay warm too. Or stay cool if you're if you're in Australia there. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Good night.